Joining us today is Catherine Dalzell. Catherine, you're, now you don't have a background in medicine, do you? Although you're here at the GP conference, your background's quite different. It's right, yeah. I'm a lawyer, so um, yeah. we're going to have a lawyer <laughs> talking to us today. And yeah. I always find it interesting when people have lawyers talking after the lunch break. I sort of think oh, really? it's, it's optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> After the lunch break, I'll keep a note of that. Yes. So, so what's your background in law? Uh, so I've um, uh, been practising for um, pretty close to 28 years, I hate to reveal that. Um, but uh, um, one of my big areas is privacy law and that's what I'm looking forward to talking with the mm -hmm. uh, uh, GPs and the practice teams today. I see, okay, so your, your main specialty is in privacy, mm. okay, in particular in healthcare yep. and GPs, okay. Which is quite a big topic, isn't it? Yes. Like I can imagine that with um, sharing of information that we've got going on for GPs, advances in technology mm. and things like that, um, it's going to be quite a challenge for GPs. Absolutely. So um, the starting point is that when I go and see my doctor or my practice nurse, uh, I'm promised confidentiality. Mm. I'm promised that it's a secret so that I tell you everything that's going on for me in a high trust relationship and in the hope that we are uh, able to sort out the, um, a medical problem or uh, issue that I'm presenting with. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of intrusions into that these days. So we have large practices, for example, that are intruding mm -hmm. on it. We also have, as you say, technology and uh, we have shared care records, we have uh, challenges with electronic records uh, and, and again sharing, sharing that sort of information. So um, privacy is all about the challenges, uh, uh, as, is, as is confidentiality, of looking after that information as best we can. Mm, okay, so what advice would you give to GPs about um, yeah, having all this information at their at their practice. Uh, yeah. yeah, they really want some good policies and procedures, and they want a culture of privacy and confidentiality. Mm. So, um, uh, and that starts from reception the minute people walk into the business before they in, until they head out the back end. Mm -hmm. um, they've also got to remember that um, uh, the best way to look after people's information is how would they like their information to be shared. Yeah. So it's really thinking about um, how we can uh, ensure that we. Uh, uh, sharing information when we need to, when there's other practitioners or other, other people involved. A good example is that you have a patient that goes into hospital and you might need to have a chat um, mm -hmm. uh, with the secondary provider about what's happening for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but also just making sure that you're not just sharing it with everybody. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, and I can imagine, for example, where I'm from is up north, up in Dargaval, um, quite a rural place. Mm -hmm. Um, what about GPs working in sort of an isolated area like that? That might be quite challenging for them. Wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because they're working in a small community and mm. everybody knows everybody. So the receptionist is also probably half the patient's next door neighbour. Yeah, or the auntie. Yeah, or, or the, the auntie yeah. related and things like that. <laughs> yeah. And she's holding on to quite a bit of information within mm. the practice and sometimes that can be quite embarrassing when, when uh, a friend or a neighbour's coming in. Now the receptionist or the practice nurse may not ever discuss it with everybody. It's just mm. embarrassing that they know. So it's really good if the GPs in those sorts of locations have good assurances, real professional approach to it, so that people feel that their information is safe. Mm. Mm. Which I understand can be quite challenging being up from somewhere like that. Oh, I yeah. um, even in my personal experience, working where I work in the moment, it's finally a hospital. Mm. I pretty much know every fifth person that's coming through the door who have come from Dargaville. My school friends, for example, coming through uh, delivering babies and things like mm. that. It's, it's very hard to, um, to keep that information to myself, yeah, although I know that is my role. Things that we, um, at medical school for example, we, we didn't really touch base a lot with privacy and things like that. Um, do you have anything, any advice that you'd give to like people like myself who are new? new in the medical profession? Yeah, so whenever you go into an agency, find out what their policies and procedures are. Mm. And, um, and But also just really think about the patient and how you can look after them the best way that you can, mm -hmm. and how, that you're also looking after their information as well. Good file noting, good mm -hmm. medical records are important. Mm. When you're chatting to the patient, just tell them what you're doing, let them see what you're writing. Yeah. Be open and transparent about the way yeah. you look after information. And as you do that, you'll find you're building up this gorgeous relationship yeah. of trust and confidence. Okay. You know, that's my best advice. Okay. What if they came with like their family or something like that, and you wanted to ask a, a personal question? Mm. Uh, oh, that, yeah. is, that is such a perfect <laughs> question, because um, people are entitled to representation and support, mm. and particularly support in a consultation. Health and Disability Commissioner's Code tells us that. Mm. But at the same time, sometimes you want to have a really personal question. 
the best example that I've seen where that happens is at the hospital where the young 14 year olds just had an accident and they take them off to x-ray and the x-ray uh, person says we'll just see them in this room by themselves and the whole reason they want to do that yeah. is because they're going to ask them Pregnancy. if they're pregnant yeah. <laughs> and they don't want the whole family there because they need to know the truthful answer to it. So, so, it's that's, not a, so that's not a new trick. <laughs> no, not at all. And the tricks that they have to keep yeah. the family out of it. Yeah. I was there one day with a family member and that, that, that conversation came up and the uh, nurse said, now we just need to see you by, and we're just going to take you in the here, but you know, so it's it's for um, an x-ray, so it's probably safer if everybody remained outside. And I said, it's okay, they're just going to ask you if you're pregnant um, without any of us listening. <laughs> and she said, yes we are. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, that's that's not an old that's an old trick, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll have to come up with something new then mm, to yeah, try and um, exactly and trick them. But we are seeing families coming. In. Mums and dads want to know what's going on with their kids mm. when they go in to see them. Contraceptive advice and things. That yeah. starting point is the patient. You've got to yeah. look after them. Yeah. Okay. And I guess one of the other challenges is again being from up north and, and working in a rural area. Mm. Um, a lot of people phone in. Yes. They want to know how their family members are doing. What, what advice would you give with people over the phone? That kind of thing. The good thing is to anticipate it. So mm. you know the family, you know them all. So when you're chatting with the patient, just say, now you're heading off to hospital, or your um, husband or wife might ring and want to know how you're getting on. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to disclose it? Because mm -hmm. you can do anything with consent. Right. So talk okay. to them about it and see what they want you to do. Yeah. Okay. And it can just be in verbal consent? Yep. Oh, yeah, see. they'll just make a wee file yeah. note. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can imagine one of the challenges in GP land is a busy GP. Mm. Um, it, it's quite easy to just talk about a patient's care in front of the family just so you can get that consultation completed. Yeah. Is that one of the, the pitfalls that you've found with GP land? Or? Absolutely. And yeah. of course that happens in the hospital all the time. Yeah. There's some forgiveness a little bit in the hospital around mm -hmm. those sorts of things. But um, I think that it's important for GPs to just think about the patient and check what they want. Mm. Is this a supportive environment or is this something that they need to mm. invite the family um, uh, to, to leave so that they can have the frank discussion with them that they need to have. Mm. Uh, no, it's, uh, and I find that most GPs have covered it pretty well. Yeah, and it's one of those skills you have to pick up, isn't it? You sort of read the room That's right. and work it out. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, um, is there any other tips that you'd want to give GPs about privacy and information sharing? Or? I think that, it's, uh, that they should have um, confidence in their, um, their IT system, so it's really good to make sure that they're they've got good IT contracts in place because the big challenge to privacy is going to be um, data breaches and people hacking into systems yeah. and we've seen that hugely in America at the moment. So they want to make right. sure they've got good contractual relationships with IT providers. Um, uh, really, really good transparency and openness with patients about how they look out okay. to information. Yeah. That's my biggest tip. Okay. And with changes in technology, are you, are you seeing, are you looking forward to towards anything, mm. like in terms of, well, for example, the genome project yes. that's coming out. That's going to be a large lot of patient data. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you got any sort of tip heads up or anything like that for that? Again, we just can learn so much, but we, we should always go back to the patient first to make sure we have consent. Mm. We've gone through um, uh, uh, really good uh, appro research approvals, including an assessment of privacy uh, before we undertake those projects. And, and um, I just think that if you've got a patient-centric approach, Mm -hmm. um, to the way you look after people, you, you automatically start looking after their information. Mm. What about people like who work with you, like the police and things, if they turned up to your practice asking questions about a patient, where does the GP stand in, in that situation? So um, there's no law that requires you to hand over information in that exchange. The, what the uh, privacy Act and confidentiality to, to a certain extent says that you may, so it's your choice. If you feel uncomfortable about giving the police information, and you may well do, then the police officer can go back and get what's called either a production order mm -hmm. or a search warrant, right. and that's a court order that requires the GP to provide the information, and okay. a GP must comply with it. Okay, and would the GP need to discuss that with the patient prior to handing that information over to the police? No, there's no mandatory obligation GP to discretion do that. To they, do it. they can do that, but they've just got to remember if they automatically hand over information to the police, they may lose that precious relationship of trust and confidence exactly. that they have with the patient. Yeah. So they may want to go and have a chat with the, the patient about it, or they may think in the circumstances that they should share information, mm -hmm. the best protection mm -hmm. is if they have a court order that requires them. Right. There's no argument there. Okay, that makes sense. Lastly, what about health care insurance? Yes. Mm. A lot of patients are, um, they don't want to present to their GPs with their symptoms, mm -hmm. with concerns that it will end up 
um, affecting them in terms of their healthcare insurance. Yeah. Where does the GP role stand in, in terms of healthcare, sh healthcare companies? This to me is one of the saddest things that's happened as a result of uh, the way insurers are seeking information from us. When I studied uh, insurance law back at the University of Canterbury many years ago now, um, I understood that insurance was a risk and mm. now the insurance companies are adopting no risk. So that when they do an inquiry into whether or not they're going to provide us with insurance, they now seek access to all of our medical records. Okay. What I recommend to doctors in that environment is to contact the patients, even though the patient's signed a consent, to contact them and say, can we have an opportunity just to go through your health mm -hmm. records so you understand what it is that we're about to share with your insurer um, uh, and then it's the patient's choice as to whether they proceed with that insurance or not. That's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that, that helps that help keeps the relationship between you and your GP as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. relationship, yeah. isn't it? And, and how far back does that insurance company, can they, can they go all the way back? Well, our challenge to, and those of us who practice in privacy, our challenge to insurance companies is yep. that they should only be asking the information they need to do the job. Mm. So the fact that I may have fallen off my butt when I was 15 years yeah. old isn't, in my view, relevant to life insurance, yet they're mm. seeking all those medical records back yep. then. So my challenge to, um, uh, to medical insurance companies is that if they are making those requests, it should be only the relevant information that they need to do their job. And if they're just seeking carte blanche, the entire record, then they're actually breaching the privacy. Right. Act. Okay. That's very in interesting and very handy to know. Mm. Cool. All right. Well, Captain, well, I'll let you go and do your talk. Thank you. I won't, won't hold you up any longer. Right. Okay. Um, it was really great to have a chat with you and Love very interesting. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay.